All right, folks. Another throwback movie, and you want her back. I'm here to deliver. Calling herself the Vexorcist. That's great, by the way. I'm an aspiring Vexologist. We have Vex in the house. We're going to talk about Poltergeist. We're, we're rocking and rolling through our Halloween uh, themes, our, our, our horror movies, if you will, scary movies. I don't know. I did Scooby-Doo Zombie Island for a talk hard. So we're just having fun with all sorts of different things. But Vex, thank you so movie. much for hanging out. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's talk about Poltergeist. You having fun with uh, the old Poltergeist memories or uh, going down the old uh, rabbit hole with a movie like that? So this is one of my basic like top five horror movies of all time. Oh, okay. I remember watching it like it was just on TV one day as a kid. And the uh, the staircase scene where you see the like the, the lion kind of um, ghost in front of the door at the top of the staircase that gave me nightmares when Mm. i was when i was younger so it's it's that movie has always scared the bejesus out of me so re-watching it now because it's been a number of years since i've watched it um re-watching it a couple weeks ago it still holds up and it still gave me the heebie-jeebies okay good um like i i it's one of the few movies i think that still despite being made almost 40 years ago now was it has it? been 40 years 1982 there uh, we 1982 go. or 82 1982 yeah yeah and year I think, movies. right i think a lot of the special effects still hold up the acting still holds up um the the storyline is still relatable whatever the family is going through is still mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. you can still connect with them and and it's relatable um i just didn't realize that I guess I always thought that the main character was, for some reason, Craig T. Nelson, because he's the most, um, I guess he's the biggest name in that movie. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but the main character is really the mom. Everything yeah. focuses around Diane. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, she's us on this journey, uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. like, I didn't, I didn't expect to rewatch this and just kind of be like, this is almost... Uh, I don't want to say the word, but <laughs> it's it's almost like a, it fits into the feminist horror category because mm. a lot of what ends up driving the plot is how Diane reacts to things or how Diane decides to approach her or, you know, uh, process certain situations. So um, she, she stays at home with the kids, so she's responsible for them. Um, she's in charge of kind of... Uh, taking care she's she's a homemaker right she's a stay-at-home mom so she's in charge of taking just taking care of the home on a day-to-day basis um when they first notice the the poltergeist in the kitchen stacking all of the chairs Mm -hmm. and everything Mm -hmm. it's not so much that the kids start freaking out or anything or everyone discovers it once it's she has been sitting here all day yeah troubleshooting it Mm -hmm. right trying Mm -hmm. to figure out what the limits of it are and then it it becomes her youngest child that gets taken. Um, she's also in an interesting situation because I didn't I didn't realize this when I first watched it. I went through the trivia afterwards. But the oldest daughter, I can't remember what her name was. Um, she's actually uh, her husband's daughter from a previous relationship. So she's actually the second wife and much younger. So she's also um, in like this weird situation of being a mother, but she's also kind of within about a 15 age, like 15 year difference of her stepdaughter as well, which it it doesn't cause any tension. It actually works to their advantage that they have like a pretty, a pretty good working relationship from what we see in the, in the, in the film. And all of what you're saying is sort of like um, stuff that was, it didn't make it to the final cut of the film. It's sort of like the backstory of things. It all just sort of naturally flows. Yeah. And it, it made it actually more believable, especially when you find out more about it. You're like, oh, okay, I get that. And I see that now. Mm-hmm. So things like that. Um, um, but yeah, it just, she, she kind of, and even her, she's the one that ends up going in to get, um, oh my God, what was the daughter's name? Carrie well, Ann. Yeah. Carrie Ann is the one that yeah. is Heather, Heather, uh, Heather O'Rourke, who's the little yeah. girl who yeah. is uh, pulled into the, t- the television. Dana is the teenage daughter that Thank you were you. referring to a minute ago. So, yeah, um, it, it, it's going to be fun with Vex. I want to see Vex's reaction because I'm all about m- mockery. You guys love to see me get mocked. So here you go. I have an irrational. My children would say fear. I'm not mm-hmm. sure I call it fear. It's definitely an uncomfortableness around clowns. I have issues. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, okay. 
I don't even know that I had thought through all this, but now we've unpacked this over the course of the time because the new it iteration came out a few years ago, right? It was a two parter mm -hmm. thing. No desire to sit through it. However, my youngest daughter started talking smack. We were in a theater to see one of the Adams family cartoons. And she's like, Oh yeah, dad, we'll just go. We'll just drag you in to see it. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like you could sit through it. She's like, Oh, well I'll go if you go. And I'm like, my daughter is calling me out in front of all these people so i'm like okay well we're gonna have to watch the first part we have to watch part one because we hadn't seen part one mm -hmm. during this process i'd unpacked a little bit more of why i have this irrational uh, thing of clowns it actually predates poltergeist a little bit but it we when we were children and we were irreparably irreparably poor like just ridiculous right so mm -hmm. the equivalent of mcdonald's at that time was like a burger chef and it had like a free happy meal halloween thing if you came in, in a costume you had this basically free food and when you're okay. that poor and you have a bunch of kids she was dressing us all up she dressed up herself and single mom went in there to, to take us all to get our little happy meals mm -hmm. she didn't tell us she was dressing up and she didn't show us what she was dressing dressing up as she had borrowed my grandfather's clothes, who's like a 300, you know, 250 to 300 pound man, big mm -hmm. guy, 6'3", comes out. She packed it with pillows. She transformed into almost like a professional makeup. And she was this, to me, a terrifying clown. Absolutely frightening. Just that's your mom. Just boom. There she is. Didn't know it was her. Freaked us out. Freaked okay. us out. Now we're getting free food. We worked through it, but it never, it never settled right. Mm -hmm. About the time I'm probably getting over some of those issues, the, uh, this movie comes out in theaters. I was only 11. I don't remember being super traumatized, but I know that when it was played on VHS, I didn't care for that creepy clown scene when it's, you know, under the bed and it comes up on top and it's strangling. And then about the time you get over that, the It movie, the little TV miniseries comes out with Tim Curry. Mm -hmm. So I've had this repeated process of not liking clowns. I don't want them near me. I don't. I'm uncomfortable. I kid you not, when we're watching the movie It at home, this, this remake, right? Mm -hmm. There's a scene... We're all there, and I'm like a total wuss. I'm in my chair. I got my blankie. I'm like on edge the whole time. I totally on edge. Like, I'm just, it's fine. Just don't mess with me, kind of thing. And there's a shot where his face, like, is really close to like the stairs or something. It's going to be a jump scare moment. At that exact moment, my other daughter comes home from work and slings the door open. I came up. I mean, I, I felt like I had peed myself. I just scared <laughs> the bejesus out of me. My wife. Laughed herself silly. Everyone's laughing at my expense or whatever. So, yes, I have serious clown issues. Mm -hmm. But for Vax, who requested Poltergeist, I gave, you know, we threw it out there. And she's like, let's do Poltergeist. I'm like, all right, let's do Poltergeist. Mrs. Pops was very surprised that I was going to sit through Poltergeist again. And I got to <laughs> be honest, it was a little rough, but it wasn't as bad as the it experience was. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I uh, got through it okay. Um, don't spend a lot of time rewatching uh, the old Poltergeist on a regular basis. Um, but I do, I will tell you that I have, um, mad respect for the film. And I wanted your take on this too, because I think this film, when it came out is part of it, it's because of the horror movement, the horror movement changed so radically in the seventies, first with exorcist, but more importantly with Halloween, cause it created like a slasher genre mm -hmm. and this went bonkers, right? Cause we ended up with um, Jason and obviously Freddie and we have this big move of horror movies mm -hmm. and poltergeist become this sort of like a horror movie that had comedy and a little bit of like family stuff in it. And it was just enough that it's not gory enough to keep, you know, you know, so it's like, it was, it was just, it's almost like a gateway film. And I yeah. think that's kind of what this film is. It's like a gateway film for folks to get into horror without anything like it. Like you said, I think maybe there needs to be a category where this movie is not scary but it's creepy and unnerving. Like, it's just not right. You don't feel comfortable when this movie is over. That's how I feel. Agreed. Yes. It, I think it fits more into maybe a bit of a thriller element as opposed to horror. Like, there's some horror stuff like the the ghosts and the clown, of course, and like, you know, the tree in the yard, right? Yes. Uh, even the the skeletons, which we learned yes. were real skeletons. Oh, in that yeah, I know they were yeah. real skeletons. Which, by the way, when you know that fact, it makes it a whole lot creepier now that you, exactly. when you first watch the movie, you know, it, it, on its face. Um, but yeah, compared to, you know, like that, sla the, those slasher films that you're, you're mentioning, it's not in your face and there's a lot more, um, 
exploration it does outside of just, okay, this is a haunted house uh, movie, right? There's an entire family dynamic. There's an entire growth dynamic when you just look at uh, kind of Diane as a as a young mother. Uh, there's the introduction of just kind of the unknown, not so much in just the supernatural, but it's exploring things that you previously wouldn't be exposed to, like how they meet um, the little medium and that team and they come in and all of that stuff. And then there's also kind of, because this is also uh, taking, this is filmed in an era where also technology is going through quite a big drastic cool. change as yeah. well right mm -hmm. so you see all of the this recording equipment all of the the video camera set up and all of this stuff um and tv has really become a staple in the western home at this point too right so it's it's interesting that this ends up being the portal for for all of this to i guess awaken or or just jump yeah. start in the home right so there's there's so many underlying uh and it's steven spielberg which I don't, even like with E.T., it's not, you could say there's maybe some horror elements with the whole extraterrestrial thing, but you're right. It doesn't feel, you know. He knew the perfect balance, right, to try to figure out a way to have all this family. El this is the thing. It's like it's we used to have film that had all of these different layers that we could at least have conversations about. Right. Yeah. Um, and you didn't touch on it, but I would say the there is something I think this is why I think a movie like Black Phone and some of the others I think work so well is there is a irrational fear you have when you have children that they will be kidnapped mm -hmm. or taken from you. Yeah, there is there is a there is an emotion that you can experience when you just lose them for five seconds. Trust me, it's happened. I have five kids. So you just you've <laughs> where's the one and you know, so um, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And two, you mentioned it just like there's no manual for one, the parenting aspects of this, like how to deal with this there. And then also, I think and it, the movie doesn't even spoon feed you. Like, cause you know, a new movie, a, a modern version of this. I didn't watch, I've never seen the new version of Poltergeist, whatever that one is. I never, I never, I'm not even going to bother. Oh. Right. The Sam Rockwell one, I think it's, it's, it's I started one? watching it. I think I tuned out after 20 minutes yeah, because I'm it not. just felt like you're a very stereotypical yeah, modern it's, horror movie. Yeah. So bizarre. Um, the the scientists it's almost like ghostbusters they they really are skeptics it's, it's mm -hmm. the, they're, they're, they're they're like oh well you know i videotaped this that rolled across the floor for seven hours and oh there's got to be a logical explanation and they really are almost like skeptics and and hoaxers themselves right so mm -hmm. the fact that that's sort of like woven into there um and and there is sort of like also the uh tv rots your brain sort of thing a little bit like there is yeah. a little something there that's sort of like unspoken that's dated and most people who didn't live through it wouldn't really have as much appreciation for now. But I know when we were watching it, all of these different emotions is what was going on with us for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's also just beautifully shot. Yes. I mean, this is crazy how beautiful the shots are, how well everything is put together. Mm -hmm. um, I just love it. And it's um, all like, this is all, it's shot in a way too that you can resonate with it. So even though I'm not a parent yet, I can resonate because this reminds me of my childhood a lot, you know, mm -hmm. kind of cookie cutter, suburban house, um, mm -hmm. up and coming area, dad who's always, you know, gone and working, mom that's always at home. Uh, like, yeah, sitting on the curb, just, you know, watching the people go by or playing outside. Like there's a lot of relatability in the way it decides to, in the shots that it chooses to take and what it chooses to zone in on as well. Right. So like, I even remember just when like and anyone was doing construction in their house, like when one of our neighbors was getting a pool in, we were all just kind of like fascinated by the fact that there was just this giant mud giant hole. hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just cause we just, we couldn't like as kids, it just like it doesn't register to you that there's more under your feet than just what you see. Right. So there's that childlike wonder and, yeah, even just like all the neighbors getting together to to watch a game or have a beer together. So there's, I don't know if this even happens anymore because I know like a lot of people it, my it's age. It's like a know. Super Bowl thing, or maybe you have a guy or one or two. But again, I want to point out again. I know we talk about this a lot on this channel. I know I do with Talk Hard. I know Vex, you appreciate this as well. Mm -hmm. Look at how different all the guys look. 
You know what I mean? Like the dude riding the bicycle to go get more beer. And this guy with like a Gilligan's hat on. This guy's as bald and he's got a beard. This guy's got his Jets jersey on or whatever. And then, of course, it's, you know, the dating nature of because because of the remote battle, because their remotes on a similar signal, Mm -hmm. it's it's changing the channel back and forth. So then we get, you know, the tree. But um, I just loved all of this. I just thought all of this was just. I don't know. I guess when you do, when you want to do a breakdown of a film like this, you really kind of want to do a rewatch experience like that. I start picking up on little nuances like this that I kind of yeah. maybe take for granted. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie. I don't watch Poltergeist that regularly. Obviously <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little creeped and bugged out by it, but I will say I have a great appreciation for what they were able to accomplish. That's for sure. Yes. No, it's just uh, this, this kind of, it almost feels like home when you're watching this movie, mm-hmm. oddly enough, in a lot of, in yeah. a lot of ways. And it's like you said, everyone's got their unique look. And it's like most of the time when you, even if you just watch like a teen comedy, like they all kind of look the same. And then you think about just even when you see like the fashion ads, like on, you know, on the internet or anything, it's just like, everyone's just wearing the same thing. It might be like a different drab shade of brown or gray or something, but there's no uh there's no life in it almost and even you look at like look at all these homes there's there's color there's vibrance in it and then you look at what's being built now and it's just like shades of gray and everything is just cookie cutter square and yeah right so doesn't feel lived in it feels no, very fake it feels it, very fake this feels like we live there like it look at the hoses all thrown around mm-hmm. Just the way the plants are on the on the windowsill, just the way that they're dealing with the dead bird, just mm-hmm. everything feels very normal. Yeah, very realistic. And the, yeah, the, even just the yard is not perfectly manicured. It's it's been made its own, right? It's it's mm-hmm. got this odd tree too. It's it's yeah, you got the little grass patch in the in the back there with the dog, and you've got all these freshly planted like geraniums and stuff up front, like and then. <laughs> The interesting kids table in the back. That looks almost like the one I had when I was a kid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? It's very nostalgic. Even having a, a goldfish. I don't even know. I work with kids and I don't know many kids that have a, a pet fish. It felt, it yeah, felt like it, a, a right Transitioning her from like you had a pet bird. Now you're going to have a pet fish. Like yeah. it's just there's all sorts of little things to relate to. Um, yeah. I, I And I love the fact that we're really getting... So what we're doing is we're just going to show you a lot of stuff going on with the family and not talk about them. Mm -hmm. Whereas most shows, there's a lot of sitting around and talking or eating and talking. And I don't learn anything. (laughs) I don't understand. It's like filler, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm watching this and we end up with like we're now there's still way more to come. This is only 11 minutes Mm -hmm. counting the credits or whatever. And we're just learning so much about their environment and who they are, what they like, you know, oh, this one lost her pet. And this one's got a little, he's a little creeped out about the tree. And then of course it's, it's, a, it's about their relationship and you know, you learn about their thoughts and processes as they're sitting there in bed together, talking and things like that. Um, yeah. Talk about just dating this movie. Holy cow. It's like a Reagan book. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and just, I don't know, just everything about it. I think I just liked, um, again, the tree mm-hmm. and he's, you know, scared. So she's trying to put out her joint cause she was smoking and they're kind of, they're kind of playing around, but it never felt like awkward or weird. And mm-hmm. it's like, we end up with like 20 minutes of, and really all we do is we start setting up things like, you know, you're counting the time between the lightning and the thunder and you're setting up the dynamics of the family. You're setting all this stuff, but you're showing me all of this. You're not discussing it. You're not, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Cause it's just, this is just a lost art. No, you're, you're spot on. And it's, it's, it's the same issue I have with, I find it very, very hard to find like a, a half decent modern film of, of any genre, because this is a lost art. Uh, like, script writers uh, filmmakers don't understand that one of the things that draws people to the movies is the ability to relate and they think that just by saying that oh that must be enough for you to relate but there's no emotion in that right i watch this family go through the day-to-day what they do behind the scenes and it's like there's weight to that because i can relate to it emotionally i can i can see myself as a kid that was too scared to sleep on his own because you know there's something outside and then you know 
teenager that just wants to stay in their room all the time and even you know older just you know hiding a joint from your parents much like these two adults were hiding it from their kids so it's like i'm i i feel the genuine connection because i can see myself doing that Mm -hmm. same thing right but it's not the same when you just have a conversation about it like ahsoka did (laughs) Well, right. and, this, and this 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 one shot that goes by ran it is completely irrelevant unless you're a parent. Mm-hmm. This this tells you so much because he gave them advice on like you're counting the lightning and the thunder and the storms moving away, so there's nothing to worry about. And that actually was what was happening in the previous scene. It goes from three seconds to four seconds to five seconds. But when they cut back, they're all in bed, mm-hmm. so it, it did not go well. It did not work out. That is a parent story. If there is one, that is exactly how that's going to go. Like you have your plan, you have your scheme, you have your rationale, you have problem solved that dad. And guess what? Still didn't work there in bed with you. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how, uh, how that joint was going with mom earlier. It's done. Now you have two kids between you. It's like, this is so dead on life experience. And I think yeah. that is what is dead. That is what is lost. These, these, there's too many creators that are in charge of doing things where they wouldn't have enough life experience to do this. Like he's mm-hmm. so Spielberg is in his late thirties when he's working on this. So he's on mid mid thirties or so. So he's had some life experience. Almost you could see him as this Craig T. Nelson character. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, people are all about, you know, he directed what, no, like he didn't direct it. He wrote it. He's on set all the time. This was his baby. He mm-hmm. was tied to ET. So there's all sorts of rules on what he can do, what he couldn't do. And reality is this works very similar to the way I think tombstone did. It's a Kurt Russell film. Guess Mm -hmm. what? They have a director. The director is nuts and bolts, action, cut, take the take, move this down, take that. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Hooper did the same thing for Poltergeist. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's Spielberg's baby. It's his Spielberg storyboard It's his script idea, story ideas, whatever. But Hooper shot the film. Like Hooper's the one calling the shots and doing the thing. It's fine. It's okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, It's Spielberg. I mean, you could just feel it to me. This felt very much like, my mid thirties, like having kids early and not know how to deal with certain things and sleeping at night and oh, it just, yeah. Without the clown, we'll get to the clown. With- <laughs> we'll get to him later. Which I um, would have liked to uh, just like a little bit of maybe a sentence here and there where they got that clown because even the kid is terrified of it and they still kept it. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I told my mom, I told my uh, mom because I, I was telling her about the clown thing, and she was having a laugh at my expense. And she says that even and I had forgotten this, but she had reminded me that my daughter, my uh, sister, when she was, I was when she, when she was born, I was turning, I turned five after her birth. So I was four when she was born. But mm-hmm. she came home, and someone had given her like a light. I want to say a life size. I, I mean, like a five foot tall raggedy Ann doll. And this thing sat in this chair thing, very similar to the way the clown is. And she's and she says, You were terrified of that thing. And I remember it briefly. Um, and I was like, Wow, yeah, I am um, I'm gonna blame the doll too, mom. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, you're you were setting me up for some issues, just so we're completely clear <laughs> on all <laughs> so yes, yes. Did she um, end up keeping that giant raggedy Ann through most of her childhood, or did you guys get I, rid of it? I don't remember exactly, but I know that something happened with, I don't know if it was a candle or whatever. It got like a scorch mark on its hand. And I remember that very vividly. It didn't catch on fire that I remember. Um, Yeah. When you're a kid in the seventies, the stories and things that you have gone through are things that most people would just cringe and couldn't believe. Like I stuck a penny in the socket. No, set the wall on fire. (laughs) I snuck off when the Christmas specials were on. So you know how this Frosty and those shows would come on? Well, it was that 30 minutes that's on. I was supposed to be there. Of course, I would be glued to the TV. Why wouldn't I be? Oh, no. I went over and took a penny and stuck it in the wall. Up the wall it went. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. So yeah. Stories, 70s. Why can't I tell you? So. Um. I will, and I will say this too. It's I think it's interesting to people who bag on Poltergeist too, and it, 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 and it is. It, there, there are certain things that I don't think generationally people can relate to. Mm-hmm. You're in that in betweener because you're a lot older than your actual age, Mike, and you're an old, you're an old soul, right? So maybe you can remember when like TV stopped and it went to static. Are you older? Oh yes, no, that? I I do remember that. Okay. Yeah, because that yep. that is something like I'm my kids would not know what I'm talking about. They're like I don't understand what you're talking about. That I don't I don't get that. 
I'm like, yeah, I know. It's okay. I think it was, it was right on, it wasn't, it wasn't like very long one. I like, there were some nights I remember when I would like, my parents would go out and I would just stay up watching TV when I was supposed to be in bed, but it would be like between three or four Mm -hmm. on some channels. It would just go static or put the, the rainbow, the rainbow colors on. Bars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and then it would come back at like five, six in the morning. Five or six like, in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I do distinctly remember that. I also. <laughs> yeah, it's like Monday through Thursday. <laughs> yeah. And it would be like the more independent stations. They just yeah. wouldn't have anybody there, and they would just run it, and it would run out. And this is what would happen. So, mm-hmm. and it was obviously it was more common the further back you go because they didn't want to have they didn't have anybody. Then they yeah. realized they could start doing all this late night programming for the people that would work third shift and other stuff and they could make money off that. And they could get away with showing riskier stuff. There you go. So, yep. Yeah. So this is actually only 20 minutes in. We're a little over 20 minutes before we get our first sign of the supernatural stuff happening with mm-hmm. the little spirit coming out of the TV and going around the room. And kind of what I didn't remember was um her reaction to it a little bit like i thought was a lot more genuine than i had remembered Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the little kid i I guess in my head i had her more like totally enamored and along with it she actually has this little moment where she's kind of like what is happening like i don't understand like she actually is a little like what's going on um so this was this was a little bit more believable than i even had in my head originally Mm -hmm. so See, she's just kind of watching it, but she's not watching it like, you know, Ooh, I can't wait to go into the TV. So, but that's um, exactly how you kind of react as a kid, though, in most instances. Yeah, like, like, Ooh, look at this. Yeah, there's so many times I can remember just, you know, being out in the yard or something and I'll find a weird bug and it's not immediately this. It's just like, what, what is you get curious and then you just you talk about it later because you remember being so curious about it. Right. It, it's a childlike wonder. That's all it is. Yeah. And the earthquake, yep. Which, uh, one of the things I appreciate about this movie as well, which uh, modern horror seems to really have a knack for wanting to do these days, is we don't need to understand from the very beginning of the film what is causing this or what has awakened this poltergeist. Right. Um, because that, that's also just how poltergeists generally start. Like, it's it's usually been documented as something that randomly happens. There's no... Uh, There's no trigger necessarily. It's not always just like a steady inclination of things that happen. It just, it's just bam, it's on and it can be off just as quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I appreciate that this film just was like, okay, you know that something is going to be up because you know, something's coming through the TV, but it doesn't explain like, Oh, because you were buried on native American ground and we didn't move the bodies. And it's something you just learn at the very end when shit is really hitting the fan. Um, because that's right. something I feel like ruins a lot of horror these days, and why I actually I have a huge appreciation for appreciation for the found footage horror genre because it builds you up to the end. It doesn't right. give you the info, and then it tries to scare you the rest of the movie. So, and I, I, again, I didn't see the modern one, but I guess if I had to make a prediction, if we're redoing this exact script now, they would want this scene when he's trying to sell another house. This is where it would come up about Native American land. And this this is where we, they would they would be giving you the audience more information than you needed. Yeah. hundred percent agree with your assessment right there. They would not have been able to resist treating the audience like they're dumb. Exactly. hundred percent. hundred percent. I was trying to get back to um, that shot, though, because I wanted oh, to. Actually, there was. OK, launch. when we get. Yeah, when we get there, there's a there's an interesting scene after this the next yeah. day, which I thought was funny. Yeah, wait one second. I want to try to get just. <laughs> there we go. That She's was the famous a... line, boy. It creeped you out when we were kids. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Who is here? What? Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. Um. Again. We're just not going to get too derailed by the story. We're going to basically just have that normal lifetime. How's it going to play out? What's mm-hmm. what's life like in their home? Mm-hmm. And then she basically is, you know, strong female lead. Let me just try to do some investigative research here with my family and find out some thoughts. And I, yeah, this was just brilliantly done. Like, what did you mean with they're here? The TV people, you know, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I thought all this, again, lends itself a lot to what you were saying earlier. Um Oh, this scene. 
This was you would never see this in a film today. Um, I think this was great. This was I, fantastic. I, yeah, I had no problem with, and it just it's the fact that the mom. Because let's face it, whether we want to admit it or not, this is a thing that still happens, despite all the progressivism and all the warnings that are out there for women. It does happen, right? So because you can't always you can't always tell how old a teenager is sometimes. Um, but I just like that it's all acknowledged as funny nobody is taking it personally or as like a they know nothing bad is going to happen it's just this is this is just part of just part of every day that's all and they all shake it off as a joke and she i like that she flips them the finger at the yeah. end as well right she doesn't play like the oh like i'm a woman you're not supposed to do that or she doesn't uh make herself come off as though she's vulnerable or the weaker sex like she owns it <laughs> yeah, the uh, the uh, cat calling construction wor worker uh, stereotype mm -hmm. trope has been since Looney Tunes, and yeah, we have Billy from Predator right there doing it to our uh, little teenage girl. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's Billy from Predator. It's for those of you at home. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah, and I, I will say this: this is actually what makes it great for you. What you're saying is they laugh at her flipping them off. Yeah, it's you know, all just it's all just fun. It's not meant to like well, that's even what, that's when it, what that's what the appropriate response should be. The yeah. appropriate response is if they were to touch her, you punch them in the face and you give them a beat down, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that she flips them off, you they they would be respecting her more by flipping them off, right? This is mm -hmm. this was the culture of that time. You know, yes, there's going to be pig men that will, you know, do whatever and whistle mm -hmm. and catcall and do whatever. And then th this was the appropriate cultural response to things. Touching her, doing something to her was unacceptable. Yeah. And yeah, they were going to get pummeled. If they weren't going to get pummeled in that moment, the dad was going to show up to wherever they live and punch them in the face that day. You know, that's exactly how the culture would have gone. Um, the fact that she stands up for herself was wonderful. It was perfect. It captures exactly. the, the time. And the mom even, the mom knows. She knows yes. that oh, and she, she can take care of herself. There's nothing I need to be concerned about here, right? right. Yeah, there's a little quick little moment where she's, you know, eye spying to what's been going on. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So then we get our first moment in the kitchen where some things have gone awry. Mm -hmm. Chairs are moving around, puts her up there. Like who moved the chairs? And then she comes back and that's what we find. Mm -hmm. So I think what's great is when you watch a movie like this, um, it's so well shot. I don't know about you, but I actually pause it for a minute. And I thought to myself, I wonder how they did that shot in 1981. You know what I mean? Like, how did they do this shot in 1981? Because because they would just use CGI or something now, right? Yeah. Like, I just the idea of who's the prop master who got to be in charge of chairs or this. You know what I mean? It's like I I, I my brain pauses. Like in 1981, how they do the shot? Not that you know. It's like we take mm. for granted. I'm like, oh, this was like not the easiest of shots to pull off. No, you're right. You know, I imagine this is probably uh, all glued together in some way. To I assume it's a whole separate table, right? It's all yes. it's like a prop table with the chairs, and yep. they're all attached to one another. And you know, they've got like little trick. You know, they'll have six different versions of that table and chairs mm -hmm. to make to, to get them what they need. Exactly. Um, but the fact that they do that is again an art that they, they don't we don't tend to have these days. So, or my even brain. Just yeah, we don't recognize it these days because we're. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're, we're so used to just, just oh, CGI. CGI. Those, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just these. There's just these tables. These chairs are on this top. This table. Just, mm -hmm. just respond accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we cut to that scene a little bit there. She, he's coming home, and this is where we get. She's been doing research and development all day. Mm -hmm. With and I love the fact that uh, it's very subtle. I, mean, I I wonder how much I picked up on before. Um with the the arrows on the floor and she's got it she has it all perfectly mapped out she's got it mapped out about mm -hmm. where to start where it will end you know which lines go where like everything is she has been spent like you said she spent all day long diane's been busy yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> yep right? um i actually kind of liked that he is so skeptical he's like what's rigged up underneath the chair am i being duped and then his reaction. I, I really thought this was really, really good. Yes, I agree. And again, this also just, it, it again, it took me by surprise because I really just, I, for some reason, the, all the times I saw this movie, I always thought he was the main character. But it's really Diane. But mm -hmm. 
no, I do. I like his reaction to the whole thing too, because yes, he still is uh, trying to play that protective father as the, the movie goes on, but the movie doesn't make it up. Cause this is also kind of the, the time where, you know, the buff big action hero is starting to, to mm -hmm. pop up in, in film as well. Right. Yeah. So I appreciate that this is, he's still a father and he knows what his duty to protect is, but it's relatable. It's realistic. Like, in this situation, how else are you supposed to react? You've been gone all day. You've been interacting with every kind of person you can think of. You've just tr been trying to sell homes. You come home and your wife is just, <laughs> she's got She's this. casually walking you through supernatural things are happening in your kitchen. Right. And, there's a, and, there, and he has his line, uh, again, folks, because of copyright, we can't exactly play this the way I'd want to. Because I'd want to play for you that exact moment where he has a, he has a line about uh, blah, 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 until I figure this out or something mm -hmm. like that. Like he's like, I have to figure out how to protect my family and get control of the situation yeah. and what I got to get caught up on what Diane even knows. Cause she's obviously clearly knows a lot more than I know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Um, and I gotta be honest. I just love this shot. I thought that was adorable. I liked that shot quite a bit. That's just beautiful. I, I actually want to know how that was done. Is she on wires when she's sliding across? Is there something underneath the floor that we it's that the camera is placed at such a way that we don't see it like because that's another thing that would be <coughs> usually just you're oh you're good that's another thing that they usually just maybe uh edit in later like they film it on a green screen and then put it in later yeah um okay you guys in chat will have to let us know you guys in the comments will have to let us know i did not uh, look that up i don't know the answer to that i'm not uh, up to date on all that trivia. usually you can see like especially with these older films you can see when there's a string pulling someone right like you can see the way part of the body jerks but you don't see that here so all diane's doing now is she's pushing her into the circle yeah now the camera does raise up mm -hmm. so whatever contraption or device that is there is likely what she's being pushed onto mm -hmm. that you just can't see the change um and then we'll just let it let it fly i don't know see How you don't you don't like you see her jolt forward a little bit but it's not yeah. as though it's string work that's jolting her forward hmm. yeah it's if good. anyone knows yeah let us know yeah i didn't uh look that up myself so mm -hmm. uh I, now this is an area that I don't totally get. I um, I don't know that the normal reaction would be go ask your neighbors if something weird's been happening because as a real estate agent who's been in this area more than anyone else, he would kind of have an idea that this wasn't normal. But I just thought it was weird. And then they they go into that with the uh, standing outside so long because the guy's just kind of a jerk to him. And he gets chewed up by mosquitoes. So if I, I had actually, a complaint, go sorry, ahead. sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, if I had a complaint about there's not a lot of value add to everything, this doesn't have a lot of value add. However, I will say it does help what you were saying earlier with like the um, the power struggle issue, like trying to figure out the husband wife dynamics of how do we take care of our family? What are we doing? We're not going to get help from anyone because clearly the neighbor guy is a complete douchebag and clearly people are going to think we're crazy and whatever. So it at least says that. I don't know what else did it give for you. Um, I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was relatable actually more than, mm. cause there, there are times where I remember like my parents physically going over to our neighbors as like, Hey, have you had this problem as well? Is your power also out? That, that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so for, for me, it wasn't that weird. Cause it was also, um, cause my parents are both Sri Lankan and we grew up in a, a very white neighborhood. So it was also a good way for them to, not only familiarize themselves with everyone, but properly introduce and break whatever stigmas the neighbors might have. So for me, I thought like, yeah, it doesn't play into the narrative a whole lot, but it's much like the first 25 minutes of the film where it's just, it's these little, little things that help make the characters more relatable, more lived in, uh, more realistic. Sure. So yeah, that all works. Yeah. I can, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this is again, we don't get removed from the story or anything like that. It's it, yeah. this just it wasn't a massive value at. Again, this is not a movie that's overly long or anything like that. So I'm definitely not calling for things to be cut out. So, mm -hmm. and this is this is that I think this is maybe when he has that line about it, you know, until I figure this out. But well, then we cut back to, and this is what I like too. Um, 
as I was rewatching it, I actually couldn't remember when we had tree and clown and stuff happening. Right. So I was like, oh crap, is this the tree part? Does he have it? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I love the fact that Spielberg knew and was clever enough to know how to manipulate us, the audience, into having multiple setups for a for the payoff. Like we're getting like multiple levels of setting things up and paying things off. This mm-hmm. isn't like just, okay, X is going to equal Y. Don't forget this. It's going to come up again. No, he he keep, he's revisiting some things and you never know exactly kind of like when it's all over. So yep. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. It's not this- just a, a cut A, B, C, D to get the plot going. Like again, most horror right. movies do. They don't try to set up little things that come into play later. Right. Right. So um, I was totally caught off guard with um the sequence i just couldn't remember i couldn't keep track of everything so Mm -hmm. we get the tree and pretty scary right things are getting sucked into the closet right and they're too busy trying to save him from the tree while everything is getting sucked into the closet which includes the daughter Mm -hmm. and then it's like the tornado hits and uh, pulls the tree away so he's able to be saved but that's when they realize where's where's carrie and she's gone she's been sucked into the closet Mm -hmm. um i gotta be honest i was I, I, I'm, I'm just, we're 40 minutes in and I'm just totally hooked on this movie. I'm just loving everything about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it happens so suddenly. It's not a, a yeah. gradual Very abrupt. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. things just, when they take off, they just stay taken off for the rest of the movie, which, again, and they keep, they keep a really good pacing, even though things suddenly take off as well, where it doesn't feel like there's um, a lull in trying to, to hook you or scare you or a lull in how the characters are developing as well. Like, Everything is very intentional and it works. Right. Right. Okay. Um, they think she's outside. She fell into the pool. There was a previous conversation about that being a possibility. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it's the, the brother that hears the voice for the first time. Look at the she's, teeth and the silhouette. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, poor fella. I couldn't help but laugh like out loud seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's yeah. cartoonish though, because even like I remember like the 80s, 90s cartoons, like whenever there's like a nerdy kid or something, they always have. <laughs> yep. He um he did a couple of films. Mm-hmm. He did the uh, airplane sequel after this. He would obviously return for the poltergeist sequel, things like that. But he wasn't in showbiz very often. He's dabbled a little bit on and off again, but uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fun though. Good point. Good call. Good on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you can't when miss you, it <laughs> well you pause it it really hits you pretty hit. <laughs> all right so then we end up with our actual scientist mm-hmm. so it's like the ghostbusters basically right um man i love the set design on this it looks again it it's lived in it looks like it's got story to tell they've been at this for a while so they know what they're doing it it doesn't look meticulously manufactured nope very very good mm-hmm. um different characters right black guy mustache lady with her hair pulled back guy mm-hmm. nerdy guy with glasses just uh yeah all very believable stuff mm-hmm. and we, we get that some time has transpired but we don't know too much but we're told through his actions right because this is the line i said earlier like oh yeah i filmed this toy that rolled seven feet it was over seven hours it was time lapse and whatever and he's just like "Mm, okay yeah mm, all right yeah okay yeah cool so obviously this has been going on for you know the whole time yeah um and i don't want to sell this shot short because it delivered this is crazy so I, I remember reading some of this um, online. Mm-hmm. So like uh, a lot of stuff was like uh, like the stuff going towards the, the window, the, the floating stuff, for example. Um, some of it is, as you can like tell with the lamp, it was digitally yeah. put in, right? right? But other stuff, they just had a giant fan. They were just yep. throwing stuff in front of it to, to get the film. And then the bed is on a... a um, a controlled a uh, rotating yeah it's on yeah. a machine with a rotating thing that they can lift the clown and move the clown around on it it's yeah on a, like a, they have a remote control on that so yeah yeah they digitally digitally enhanced the scene and made some changes to it mm-hmm. but really really good great reactions and stuff like that love it 
And we don't have to say a whole lot because what we can do is we can just show that she's actually shaking when she holds her cup. Mm -hmm. And even <laughs> just even just her reaction, it's all in her face. It's just like, I've yeah. been doing this a while, but I haven't seen any of this before. Nobody has seen anything, right? Because that's what the guy's right. story is so great. Because the, the story about the, it's almost like the mold and the stuff that we get with Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. Like, no, nobody's seen anything like this. This is legit. So, mm -hmm. I like that they're they're all there too. It's the the family hasn't said like oh kids go to your go to your room or anything like that. It's like they they're dealing with this as a family. It's not that anyone needs to be sheltered or hidden from it. It's it's a reality that's unfortunately hitting all of them regardless. So I liked that they still the remaining family was still here for this entire conversation. I also like it. He's the only one with bag, like noticeable bags under his eyes. The... It's you know it would be noted then, um, or we we should be able to infer based on the fact that the kids are there and still there, mm -hmm. that most of the supernatural is confined to that one room. Like yes. it's not the whole house. We're not we're not continuing to have earthquakes and other things that would cause the whole f family to panic and want to kill their kids out of there. Well, at this point, at this point, it feels like a very contained supernatural incident and that's why everyone is together i again like we can we this is the storytelling that we should be able to pick up on and mm -hmm. and follow along with the filmmakers um just because of the nature of the story so mm -hmm. um then we just kind of walk through you know the whole you know communication with carol ann right get mm -hmm. through the tv talk to me baby talk to me talk to mommy and then it's like this back and forth about, you know, what to say, what the rules should be and all that. And mm -hmm. I, again, I think you and I are just going to praise this film to the hilts because you feel the trial and error. Yeah. You feel like it's not like it's, it's not like a Rubik's Cube. You know, the person comes in and blah, 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 they figured it all out. We're good. This is what you do. And you're like, why would it be easy? Why would you know what to do? You wouldn't know what to do. Like, and it's perfect because this isn't a sudden thing as the audience that we're seeing because we were primed for this when Diane was figuring it out in the kitchen earlier, right? So mm -hmm. it this isn't one of the – because, again, another thing that it seems that modern horror does quite a bit is just like, oh, suddenly the protagonist knows exactly what to do in this mm -hmm. rare mm -hmm. once-in-a-lifetime situation for them. But, right. you know, we've There's already no handbook, primed. but you suddenly know exactly what to do. Exactly. Right. And we know that Diane already, she's she's an investigator. She wants to know more. So it's we were primed with that already. And I appreciate that she is kind of over time. Even I, I would have liked if we just got because I don't think anyone says how long it's been going on. No, no, no. That's actually. Cut. And I like the fact that we don't exactly know. Like we we can tell by, you know, um, Craig T. Nelson's character, mm -hmm. the bags under the eyes. The uh, the casual nature of the when he opens the door, how they are discussing this with the scientists. It's like it's been a few days. We don't know. You know, it, I, it may, I assumed it was a few weeks in all honesty. Well I, well, I think we get that a little bit later on, maybe because okay. the boss shows up about how many days of work you've missed or something like that. So maybe you're right. I, I don't remember the exact timeline, but it they've been they've been dealing with some of this for a minute. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is one that when you feel like the spirit comes down the 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 staircase and hits her, and you can smell her and whatever, and, the, and everyone's having these emotional reactions. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, I think what is what the movie is doing very well is playing within the rules that it wants to create. Yeah. So whatever those rules are, she can be sucked into TV. This is how you communicate. This is what the rules are. We just kind of keep exploring what some of those are with the family and the scientists. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he got bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I oh I didn't remember this. Yeah, he said that he got he went up. No, he he went in the room, right? He went in the care. closet. Oh, and something bit him in there. Yeah. yeah. I, oh God, this is the lion thing. Still, really gives, mm -hmm. gives me the heebie-jeebies quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, because he he thought he could just go in there, mm -hmm. and uh, he comes back with actual bite marks. So you're like, there's an actual physical threat which had not been explored yet. It's like no. it's foreshadowing that something could be. And, and I love the fact that they included the kid in the in the center. Mm -hmm. To again keep us unnerving, like you kids are at risk, you know. What I mean? The adults are getting hurt. So what about what if this had happened to you? You know what I mean? Like little things that are, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, really, really good. 
And this is them explaining, like, I don't have no freaking idea what's going on in this. I have no idea. I've never. They're seen all whispering. Like yep. Yep. Yes. That's so loud. That's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though because it's just like in actuality, like there is, um, like there aren't people in the real world that are like poltergeist ex like experts. Or it's still a very unknown phenomenon, even though there's like some major recorded instances of it. So I actually appreciate this because it adds a little, again, a little bit more realism and understand that this is not a common thing that happens whatsoever. Um, it's the same thing with, um, oh, not poltergeist. Uh, Oh, uh, exorcisms. There's no exorcist rule book for anything because it's such a rare occurrence, even in what's documented. So I appreciate so, that. Oh, uh, well, there is a little bit of exorcism stuff that's documented in the Catholic Church in particular and that kind of thing. I actually feel like since, because this was like, this was actually all so much more like socially acceptable when I was growing up, like through the 70s and the 80s. Like, no one really felt like Amityville was like a fictional story. Like we all were like, yeah, all right, that kind of happened. Like, you know, exorcist. Okay. Maybe not that. You know, we all felt like, yeah, maybe <laughs> you just felt like, you know, okay. It's possible. Maybe. Sure. You just, you just kind of felt like this is the stuff that's, it could just be out there. Right. Some sort of spiritual warfare type stuff, afterlife questions, things that don't transfer over. You just felt like all this stuff felt very normal and natural as sort of like a, it's kind of out there thing with today, because we've had such a, a boom of using cameras and, and, and editing and all the different things that do ghost hunters and all this kind of stuff. That it's because it's it saturated the market, if you will. Yeah. And made a lot of this more like, hokey unbelievable stuff so that if there are weird uh uh unexplainable stories because there are mm -hmm. they just kind of get lost in the, in the noise they don't kind of like you know because when i was growing up if you had just said amityville even if you hadn't seen the movie everybody knew what you're talking about yeah right if you made a damien reference we all knew we were talking about omen you're talking about a little kid he became you know demonic because he's like, oh, yeah. a crazy little kid you there was little little references and things like that were in our sort of our lexicon and older guys become part of that very, very quickly because mm -hmm. of some of the elements that you're like, oh, haunted house, weird things. OK, you know, you just kind of felt like, OK, maybe. Sure. You know, you weren't really being criticized for any level of belief or disbelief. It was just sort of like part of part of just sort of, just sort of out there. Yeah. And I think Spielberg uses this sequence to kind of give us a gradient on that, because mm -hmm. um, obviously. Lady Boss is in it for in it to win it. She connects to Diane. She's there to help figure out how to save this kid. Yeah. Black guy seems very fascinated. Like, okay. White guy's like, I got bit. Something's up in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and that gets worse in just a few minutes. Um, yeah, this is them bonding, which is sweet because again, Spielberg uses the little boy as like a way of dealing with, well, what if I die? Mm -hmm. You know, so again it's deep without being lectury it's like deep without being i don't know how to explain why it works so well for like, it's relatable that's yeah. all it is it's mm -hmm. like whether you're the parent or the child in this situation it's like there's there's some memory that you have that oh i can i can empathize with this mm -hmm. and i understand what it what's going on here and what they're feeling so mm -hmm. okay. it's relatability that's all it is sure that makes sense mm-hmm all right. Yeah, this is when it starts to get weird. Okay, so he oh. is sneaking in to get some food. Mm -hmm. He has food, which, which, by the way, I was really struck that he put, what does he have in his mouth? Isn't that a, a pork chop? It's a chicken leg in his mouth. He doesn't heat it up, right? No, no, he doesn't. He just Eating cold chicken is really, really not good for you. Don't ever do that at home, people. That's So the PSA from Pops, please do not just grab cold chicken and eat that. Cold pizza is one thing. But not chicken. You can get sick from cold chicken. Okay. Just so you oh. at home. Yeah, cold Sorry. chicken. Because chickens generally have a lot of cooties in them. Like they're yeah. salmonella and some of that kind of stuff is common in a chicken. You cook it, not gonna hurt you. You start eating cold chicken, you you are increasing your risk for no reason at all. Um, and, oh, I always just put cold if I put chicken in a salad, I always keep it cold. Oh, um, <laughs> It's probably already been cooked, though, right? It's not. Oh like yeah, it's, it's already yeah. cooked. Yeah, it's not like it's yeah, raw yeah, yeah, chicken. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you have cold chicken. Like what he has is like the un, 
he has the leftover chicken leg from earlier that has sat open to the environment, you know, in a gotcha. fridge. Like that's different than your packaged chicken for your salad. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Um, so this was this weird, this is the weird food hallucination scene, but with the meat, the meat was such a weird thing for us. I don't know how well you thought it held up or not, but for I think us, it held up wonderfully. I'm still, I'm disgusted just looking at the stills right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, this 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 scene of it moving and stuff, it unnerved us like you wouldn't believe. Like it just got it it bothered us. Like we were really a little tripped out. This was kind of a thing for us. So I got goosebumps right now just looking okay. at this. It's this is uh this holds holds up wonderfully and it's creepy and I I like that it takes him a moment. He's like, what's going on? And then he flashes the light and it starts, mm -hmm. you know bursting and everything this even when when uh once he he goes to the bathroom as well um yeah well, we're going to get to that because i want to get yeah. so again this is one of the things that you'll so people will, will be critical for this sequence because obviously the makeup and the prosthetics are you know very apparent mm -hmm. but the scene itself gets very very graphic very very crazy and over the top unexpectedly with, because you don't get the we, feeling at all through this whole movie so far that this is going to be that gruesome kind of horror at all. This is great. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And as fast as it starts, it's over. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get to the scene that you really are bothered by, right? I get this. This is really kind of interesting. Um, so there is something that does happen in films that I actually am very critical of. It would it would not be fair to let poltergeist get off on this. A lot of times things only work if one, somebody doesn't share information or the person just behaves in a completely irrationally dumb way. Okay. So the idea that you're in a haunted house and you're going to have headphones on and you're not going to be able to pay attention or you're going to fall asleep and the, mm -hmm. it only works if you're going to let someone be that dumb. And I got to be honest at that point, it's population control. So um, <laughs> this this does take advantage of that a little bit um, because the door opens and we end up with like, um, why aren't you paying attention? Because there's stuff coming out of the room. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh. This real, like 40 years later, this still looks good to me. Look at that. Yeah, I don't even know if this had been remastered or not, or how much of the original effects to this is the same or not. But I got to be honest, I thought it held up. I thought all of the spirit effects, this one and the one that comes later, were all yeah. very, very well done. If, if, if of the only effects that actually I thought were sort of like bad was mm -hmm. not bad for its time. And that was the prosthetic scene that we just had because it was yeah. clearly like not the actor it was like transition to weird prosthetic masks yeah. being torn apart. Like it was very abrupt, but it also was like in its hallucination scene. It wasn't like, you know, we we're just supposed to accept this character walking around with a mask on. It was, it was mm -hmm. fine. So for what it was, that's a very, to me, a very minor criticism. Yeah. Um, so, and I, again, I just love the fact that they don't know what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that like yourself, they're not, uh, they're not keen on any of this either. No. She's just, yeah, see, look, she she's an investigator. She's interested. What is that? I'm, yeah, everyone else is um, totally spooked. Mm -hmm. And while she is, I think, fearful, she's still not turned off from being ambitious. And nothing, nothing is sort of like deterring her from going on her mission to figure out how to save her daughter. Exactly. This stuff can be as weird as... as you know, I'll get out and everyone else can be afraid, mm -hmm. but nope, not her. So they start watching it again and you start to be able to see, you know, actual people. like people, yeah. right? So you start to understand the timeline of, um, oh, okay. So now, and then and there's another little reference. I, guess, I don't know, again, what we miss and what we won't miss, but yeah, okay. So Lady Boss is investigating like I think it, well, it must be after this, right? Because they had stuff that comes through the through the gate. Mm -hmm. um, but we start to get our first allusion to different time to time periods. There's mm -hmm. different goes from different time periods. That's yes. all we'll say. Okay, could be dangerous to the kids. Let's get the kid out of here. We do that. Very quick scene. Oh, oh, Very there tender. was a 
Yeah, there was a there was a scene I guess that we kind of just skipped forward through, but okay. there the jewelry drops after the ghosts disappear, right? Was it this scene or was it after this scene? It's right after this scene, so I think okay. we fa- fast I think they, forward. I think they talk, yeah, because she's going to start looking at the pieces. She's now. got all the jewelry, right? right? So yeah. like in the in the earlier night scene when the lights were all there at the very yeah. end, of, yeah, it concludes with a bunch of stuff dropping from the ceiling, and you're like, what is that? And then it, as they look at it, it, they put two and two together. Okay, we saw these older looking ghosts that look period specific. And now we have this jewelry here that also you can say is at least 100 years old. Right. Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of spin our wheels a minute because she, she's like, I can't explain why this is, you know, 100 years old and this one's not. Things mm-hmm. like that. Um, yeah. And, and And she's basically like, we're going to we're going to have to we're going to have to go find someone else. Yeah. I'm I'm here to I'm here to help you. This was such a great hug. This yeah, was they, good. They understand. Like they know yeah. that this is not like I my my complete faith in this getting resolved was not just on you because I I understand that this is not a, an everyday situation you probably deal with. So it's like there yeah, she's she's scared and she's worried, but she understands. And it's not again, that's not usually something you'll see in, in female leads these days. They usually make them quite um reactionary instead because they fail to do what this movie does in, in which they build up the back, you know, the the what the character is actually like. So instead they use kind of these punches of emotion to try and get it across, but it doesn't carry the same weight. Cause then you can't relate to them because you're just wondering. Why the hell would I be reactionary in this right. situation, right? So, and, I, and again, I, I'm, we're let's, let's 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 go all in on the sexist card here. This is a film directed by a man, written by three or four men, three men, mm-hmm. uh, produced by two men, um, uh, shot and edited by men, music by men, and yet is about a strong woman who's being helped by a strong woman. And a man that is completely falling apart at the seams. Like the, the this shot that we had earlier, this <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He is like, I am well, you know, he is just like being crushed. And I have to be honest, in my rewatch of this a couple of days ago, I really related to Craig T. Nelson's character. Like, I feel like this would be Mrs. Pops. She's the bulldog. I'll figure it out. Um, this lady knows what she's talking about and I'd just be frantically like trying to figure out how to hold my life together and I'd just be falling apart at the seams. Th- this like, is I honestly can't. how my husband reacts. It's, it's, I, I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm boom, boom, yeah. boom. I can go get it done. I can yeah. compartmentalize it, but he's just like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Like what? <laughs> I don't yeah, the only exception to that rule is the hurricane thing. Like I'm yeah. the rever- it's all reverse for the hurricane. I'm the one that's totally fine. I'm not. I'm like, let's just do. We got, we got, we got steps to do. She's the one that's really, really stressed. But mm-hmm. when it comes to something like this, where it's much more tangible, especially with the kids, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So this is the boss scene, and I don't exactly <laughs> remember. He looks what like a about- cool. <laughs> Yeah, he's freaking mess, man. It's like he has slept the whole time or whatever. Um, basically, the long and short of this is the boss thinks he's just going to quit and go work somewhere else. Like this, is, he's totally misguided on what's actually happening. That's all yeah. that matters for this scene. Because uh, I think, we, we, um, also, oh, sorry. No, go uh, ahead. Also, like, because one of the earlier scenes when they first talk to the the paranormal investigators, they also ask, mm-hmm. like, "Have you gone to the news about this or anything?" So, oh, right, right. Was trying nobody, to yeah, mm-hmm. nobody at all knows what's going on. The family has kept this very hush hush. Yeah, they want to keep everything quiet. They don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't want to demean the the neighborhood or anything like that and whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Um, quick shot of uh, Diane's at home. You know. We know things are kind of going on. We don't really know exactly our timeline. We know stuff is happening. And she just takes a moment. And I love that they let... Uh, what's her, just Joe Beth Williams, right? Yeah, Joe Beth. They let her just like take her time with this scene. Right? I, I guarantee on the page, it's very, very simple about Diane's hesitant, but mm-hmm. opens the door. And they just let her... She knocks... Nothing happens. I I don't know. I mean, am I over? I mean, I don't know. I'm probably just this is this is again pops nerdy time, but this is the kind of stuff that just makes my world, guys. This is the kind of stuff that when you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm-hmm. And um, 
this is just lost. Like we don't have it. Like she doesn't know what to do, but she feels like maybe this is a chance I could connect. Maybe I could see if it's okay if I can come in and maybe I could talk to him or something. Maybe I could, you know, and it's like not, it's not said. It's like, you're just getting this process for her to like work it out. Um, yeah. I, I keep playing with an overlay, no matter whichever, nothing, nothing is, nothing is preset for us to not block one or both of us out. Sorry. Okay. We don't have a good overlay for this, but um we'll see so if you're if you're if you're catching this and there's been a little trim or something like that that i apologize yes. <laughs> lord knows i'm not going to be happy that i'm playing it <laughs> she's very very cautiously and slowly yeah. approaching that doorknob and and i will say you really don't know what's going to happen you you just yeah. literally are kind of on your like, oh crap she's gonna open the door it's much like the the face melting scene. You don't. This movie is really good at, at catching you off guard. Even though, again, like I said, once things take off, they stay taken off. Yeah. So it's just a loud, creepy, shrilly sound, and she just panics and cries. It's just it's emotionally. So it's just it's just terrifying in there. Mm -hmm. It's how she feels. So I loved it. Loved it all. All right. We got to get on with our story. We have a little bit of the backdrop of, of some foreshadowing, some stuff about the cemetery. And again, it's like him being talked through, keeping him for the job, offering this sweet, sweet thing. They're going to expand to a new section of the neighborhood, that kind of thing. We cut They're back actually, at night. The, and but, this is, again, a drip of like what to expect to come at the end. But he's just like, oh, you're this will be your lookout. This will. Yes. And he asks, like, oh, what are you going to do Oh, with the cemetery? Yeah. Right. And then they don't, yeah. and then just like, oh, oh, there's, a yeah. And he's of, like, oh, we've um, done this before. We've moved cemeteries before. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's weird. He's like, no, no, they don't mind. You know, it's okay. And you're like, all right. Yeah. So, if, and if you never watch it, I'm not sure you pick up on it exactly. Like, I, I it, it's easy because we've seen the movie before. So it's easy to know this is the piece. I, I couldn't tell you if I picked up on it the first time or not. I don't know because it just happened after the other moment. The other moment has me still on edge like this, you know, the scene with the doorknob has me on edge that I don't know that I would go. I, I would pick up on the foreshadowing. So gotcha, gotcha. And we don't have time and we don't have time to mull on it because we get. Oh, gosh. The how can we not just love her? Oh, my gosh. She is just the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Beatrice. So Dr. Lesh, Dr. Lesh is just the best. Oh, she's just so fun. Um, I will say I love the fact that they waste no time. Well, first off, we also get a little quick little comment. Mm -hmm. White guy's out. He's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> He's been bit. His, the, the chicken yeah. and the meat are bad. Uh, his face melted off. He's seen spirits come down the stairwell and stuff falling out of the ceiling. He, Too bad he, I can't yeah. stay, baby. I'm out. <laughs> Black guy's in it to win it. He's got a camera. He's good to go. So, all right, we got him, though. All right, we bring her in. And I love the fact that um, Craig T. Nelson's character, I should probably remember his name, Steven. Um, whoa, that's a little on the nose, Steven. Steven, Steven. Okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I didn't catch that before. Um, he's, like, testing her. Like, he's like, I'm just making her think the answer that I'm answering her quite. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, because there is a part of the audience for sure where you're like, yeah, come on. She's she's a fraud, too. Like, you were supposed oh, to yeah. believe this little weird, creepy looking frog lady and her weird, you know. So I like the fact that they kept that in and did that scene. So. I did, too. And it was a nice little bit of, again, this is where you kind of you get the feel that this is 100 uh, percent a Spielberg film because it's a, a slight comedic relief that works it doesn't overly break the the narrative or the tone or where the scene is going but it's enough to just be like oh okay that's a it's a little wholesome you know i, I yeah. kind of do that right because he has he, i noticed that he in his films he has a a bit of a a a thing for doing that uh yeah, Indiana Jones, I, yeah I, I noticed it quite a bit as well so yeah raiders especially is so perfectly yep. done just mm -hmm. a beautifully perfectly tight script for that mm -hmm. oh my gosh and let's just be honest, man. When she landed on the scene, she was the thing, man. Everyone was talking about her, man. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we're going to get to her famous line later. But yeah, this was just uh, her twist on what we should do and don't do. And, and mm -hmm. being a very 
strong connection to Diane and demanding of her and um, ordering Stephen, who's uh, look at the skeptic and he's a, he's not even in the scene. He's in, he's in the other room leaning. No, like, no yeah, he's whatever. right there. He's behind the black guy right there. He's just like, what yeah. the hell is going on? He's yeah. got booze. He's got his booze in front of him. He's just, you know, whatever. Here we go. And uh, it's just this quiet, motherly coaching through what to say and do and how we're going to navigate things. And it just keeps the intensity just keeps rising. And then it's like this whole thing about, you know, you need to answer, you need to answer, you know, or there'll be a spanking involved and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I just love it so much. And then just like very much like Close Encounters, he just knows how to play with the light, play with the mystery, play with all of the elements here. Mm -hmm. And then we're just, we're just, and now we're just coming up with this experiment of like how we're going to try to navigate through what will work. And it, I, I will say as I, as I rewatched it, it was almost like taking mental notes of the sequence. Again, mm -hmm. like you said earlier, like modern film sometimes, it's like the uh, the protagonist will just know what to do. Oh, we're just going to send someone to the door. Grab that rope and just do it. And you're like, what rope? Like, what? What? Why would you even have rope? What? Why would you be doing this at all? Like, whose idea is this? Like, where did you right. come up with? Here, you feel like there's like a strategy and a plan and a sequence. And they, they allow it to sort of build on itself mm -hmm. um, and, and with increasing risk. Like we don't just go foolhardy with everything, right? Mm -hmm. the, uh, and I, is. I like mm -hmm. that too. The 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 medium as well is just like it's just like uh, I should go in. It's just like, but and the, I and then Diane's like, no, I should I should probably go. And she's like, I've never done this before. It's just like <laughs> I've never done it before either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, even the medium is like, yeah. despite all of her her knowledge so far, because she knew how to yeah. communicate and whatnot, and she knew that they would have to go into a, a different realm. Yeah. She's still just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here, really. <laughs> right. I'm not sure I should let you go. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rope comes through and, and again, I love this guy, man. His reactions to everything is just, it really, really keeps you connected. They just do it. It's, it's like he's really the audience in all honesty. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah very much. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. Yeah. So the fun experience of just kind of going through everything, mm -hmm. how we're going to navigate and just the yelling, the intensity, the, the chaos, and it works. Mm -hmm. And they come through covered in slime, and you're like, "What <laughs> on earth is happening?" That's uh, yeah. that's actually another thing I'm glad that they didn't try to expand on is what what first of all was that realm like that they went into. We get an idea of mm -hmm. it later on in the film, um, but also what is it that they're they're covered in? Because it lets your imagination run a little wi a wild, which I appreciate. Um, again, another thing that modern horror doesn't want you to do. They want you to have a very contained experience but this film doesn't do that at all so for me as a kid i was like oh my god they're covered in blood and guts aren't they like yeah, there's they're just all covered those with, yeah right all those spirits that we saw earlier those those are just their guts isn't it right and i i like that you're allowed your mind can still wander with as much as they've given you in this film yep. <laughs> Just, just slowly just, ease into everything. Just wake it up out of a nap, you know? Yep. yep. And that's the, another thing, too. I'm glad Hi, that they Daddy. Don't, yeah, they don't, they don't pester Carolyn. Like, what happened there? Like, what did you see? Where were you? Like, how come you... No, no. It's just like there are things that are unexplained in the real world. This It's it's unexplained in the in the film as well. And it it, it works. It, it makes everything like a hundred times more tense. Then we get. I did it. <laughs> this house is clean. <laughs> yes. Oh, so good. Um, yeah, that was such a big deal. This and everything about this was just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. Yeah. And so oh, it's time to move. We're not staying here. Everybody moving out. We're moving out. Holy cow! Are we moving out? Um. Yeah. I just love that it all just moves well. Now again. So I go back to what I said earlier. It's not fair to be critical of other films. And now this one, this sequence only works if a character does something extremely and remarkable, stupid and careless. Yes. Like it only works if we're going to do it. It makes no sense why you would do this. But mm -hmm. here we go. Um, the movie and it's now, now we're officially going to do third act stuff and it becomes extremely creepy for me. It's the last 15 minutes, man. Oh, it's intense. <laughs> Holy crap. We 
So it's like it's like you've been going along and slogging through this little supernatural house haunting story and kidnapping story or the child abduction story or whatever. And then suddenly it becomes this like all out crazy explosion of intensity. Um, so the kids are there. They're going to put themselves to sleep, basically. And she's going to take a bath. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I. There's part of me is like, does anything happen in the bathtub? Like I'm, you know, because of Friday the Thirteenth. But I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. So you're, just, I'm just, yeah, I'm on edge. Um, yeah, I'm not, not, not a fan, not a fan. Of what is happening here? So, first off, Darth Vader. Yep. I had that action figure collector case. Really. Awesome. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I gave it to one of the children. One of the children have mine. Now the insides have stickers torn off and things like that. It's all bad. Except <laughs> like a child, a kid, but I actually yeah. had a kid. That was the case I had too. Um, but yeah, now the freaky clown is missing mm-hmm. and then it attacks him under the bed. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. He's got to go to the other side to look. Sorry. I keep jumping around because. That's why you don't want to see it. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I don't. I, I think we should. I just got to, you know, the, the the thing only, it's like plus 30 minus 10. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha it's, okay. it's, it doesn't give me the best options to do this. And then I tried yeah. a different way of pulling up the movie mm-hmm. and it didn't have uh, any plus or minus jumps. So you would have to just kind of move it. Gotcha. I think that's what I tried last time we were going to, we were going to dabble with Goonies, but ahead of time I was like playing with it. It was like, Oh, it's just, so I was like, all right, let me, let me have a, let me do a digital file with it. So gotcha. I can make it a little okay. bit easier to manipulate. Um, did you ever watch scary movie two at all? The, those parents? Oh yeah. 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 I've seen the scary movies and yeah. Were you okay with that cloud though? That was quite funny. No, no, no? Really, okay. no, not a fan. No, <laughs> I mean it. Okay. I get it. Right. So, but it's still like, mm, you know, mm. Yeah. all right even like the cartoon like there's even like it stuff they put in like cartoons and adam mm-hmm. family whatever and i'm just like mm, clown huh mm. i don't know just one of those things where you just yeah, yeah. doesn't do it doesn't do and it i think it again i think unnerving is a good word for me like I'm, I'm like i don't know that it's fear exactly it's like you know so however this too bad i can't evil, stay evil face as well yeah, it definitely is just totally and um and obviously the arm going around is suddenly significantly too long. Like it's like it's like six feet long, whereas it's like before it's like a little, you know, you yeah. know, proportioned arm and stuff. So everything is crazy. And of course, then they drag him under the bed and you're like, Oh, what is happening? Then she and then mama gets attacked. They could, you know, she's getting thrown around the room, sucked up on the roof, and all sorts of craziness is happening, and mm-hmm. you know. Uh, closet lights up. Charlie doesn't even know what to think. And uh, yeah, it's this is nuts. This is crazy. Um, and again, this works because he leaves them alone. She takes a bath and leaves them alone. <laughs> You're just yeah. like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. And just all uh, all of the uh, gates of hell are opening up and uh, it's, it becomes crazy. So we end up with the famous uh, swimming pool where... Um, the, yep, all the graves start coming up and the bodies start popping out. Yeah. Yeah. The, her reaction, though, I mean, she's terrified. Yeah. yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe Buff Williams is bringing it with this, this movie, man. Uh, yeah. Real life skeletons, shenanigans are afoot for sure. Um, getting sucked into the wall. I mean, just. Just great stuff. This is crazy really, how good this is. I really like. Oh, if you go back, maybe you can see it. the The closet because I think there's a shot where they they actually show you. It's all like an intestine in the closet or something. Right there. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Looks awesome. Yeah, and they, and they, and that does like what you said earlier. It now we get like what explains like the pumpkin guts that were all over everybody like yeah. before. It's like oh okay, yeah. we see it's like the. The gateway or whatever is very fleshy and and, and mm-hmm. wet and gross and slimy. So yeah, they should really add a poltergeist ride at Universal or something. We I don't know eat- if they've ever done a poltergeist for Halloween Horror Nights. So they, that would be what I parent. would. Yeah, okay, that would be I, what I would expect. There'd be a poltergeist yeah. experience that you'd be going through in some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form with some of this kind of stuff, which would be super cool for anyone that's into this movie for sure. Oh yeah. 
I'm waiting. Yeah. Apparently, they've done it like five times for Halloween Horror Nights. So I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah, it seems like it would be on a rotation thing. where they try to mix it up and do different yeah. things. Yeah, sure, so sure. I'm waiting for that rotation to come for Poltergeist. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so then we kind of transition. And again, I want to just uh, I, this. I love this scene. I love this shot, and I love that he's just like, you know, this is Mister Helpless. Look at everything about his body language, his demeanor, and his appearance. is cleaned up again. He's got his life back. He felt like he had everything under control again. He's moving his family again. He comes home, and it's like, yeah, I just love it. I, I thought this was so – it was such a believable response mm -hmm. um, in his face. I just I just loved it. Yeah. All right. So uh, the, yeah, yeah, the he's boss – yeah, he's with the boss. The boss sees it for himself. Um. And there was the conversation right here. We're going to get the, uh, you know, uh, trying to get everybody out of there. It's like, oh, you moved, you moved the headstones, but you didn't move the caskets. The yeah. Didn't move the bodies. Yeah. Wh what on earth? So, yeah. Um, and I remember being a kid and there was always talk. And I don't exactly know how to give any context to this. So you guys will make your comments. Someone like Stephen Ransom. Um, some of you guys will definitely be able to back me up. Matt, uh, the unbearable 73, he'll know. Um, there was always like a lot of conversations of things about like uh, graveyards, uh, Indian reservations, things like that with, with sort of like spooky things and spooky behaviors mm -hmm. and like a reverence that you should have for everything. So this movie totally taps into that sort of like cultural mythos that was happening in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. For sure. So for me, I think this was around the time like, I remembered pretty distinctly, like around the time I'd first seen this movie, there was like an instance where they had found like a new uh, burial ground in my town or whatever. And they started digging up um, like arrowheads and stuff. So there was a little excavation site um, near the town library as a result. So for me, this fucking creeped me out because <laughs> I'm just like, OK, that's happening on the other side of town. But now I'm wondering, like, what if? What if our house was, you know, built on, built on, you know, some sort of Indian burial ground? Am I going to find? So as a kid, this scene really, really terrified me, like seeing the bodies come up and then him having yeah. this conversation because I, yeah. I was making real world connections and my imagination just couldn't, couldn't help running. So. And you felt like, again, culturally, right? So culturally, you felt like <laughs> you're growing up and uh, so I'm 11 years old. Amityville, Exorcist, mm -hmm. Omen, um, you know, that part's out there. The development of the horror genre is out there. You have this reverence for graveyards and cemeteries, mm -hmm. uh, ghosts being real, haunted houses. You have you have sort of all of this in the culture, and that's what he taps into, I think, with this movie. He mm -hmm. quite like brings all this in, gives you a real-life family structure with all of its warts, and says, well, what if they were to go through something like that? Yeah. Okay, there we go um again a little bit of the hollywood cliche can't get the carter up but the daughter shows up right when all of that's happening don't go back actually because there's this is a detail that i i caught uh, on the rewatch she's got a hickey on her neck oh yeah she has a massive hickey on her neck yeah and it's just typical teenager because every yeah. time we've seen her in the movie so far it's just typical teenager things right so i thought that was a nice yeah. little and she's just screaming it just and i thought it was it was a bit funny her reaction yeah um there's the boss with his reaction. That's yeah. finally going to catch up with him. And uh, they're trying to drive away. And the house sort of like is just basically imploding on itself. Mm -hmm. And then um, they get to a motel. They all go inside. And then he just, he wheels the, uh, he opens the door. Because you actually, it feels a little weird. Because if you don't know what's happening, he's like, why is there a hesitation? Why are we staying on this scene? The movie's over. And yeah. then they, they, uh, he wheels the TV out and then the, the camera starts pulling back away and that's when we get to our credits so mm -hmm. yeah um yeah a lot of love a lot of love for poltergeist um yeah yes yeah, so other than the clown bit uh i don't know if mrs pops would be down with watching this one again or not i don't know we'll see I, i'll throw it her way um so yeah by the time you guys are all watching this um you could know that if if and around this time check that playlist right you'll see some we did a rewatch of fright night I really like the uh, the actually even the remake I don't think was that bad for Fright Night. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna do Fright Night, um, Lost Boys, 
So yeah, we're gonna do Lost Boy. So yeah, some definitely some, you know, let yeah, because yeah, I did a little thing. I just I just uh, for Halloween it'll come out actually on Halloween. Um, a little thing about the other Saw movies. I did the one thing on the one Saw movie, but I had binged all nine of them, and I hadn't really done any videos. I'm like, these movies suck. So let me just do a video of like, and, and other people were like, they really suck. I'm like, okay, well they don't. Okay, these are you know this and this. So I, I do with Poltergeist. I didn't need to know a whole lot um, about the sequel or the remake or the reboot or whatever it is you want to call this thing. Um, but I was just not interested in watching it again. Um, I just didn't feel like I had any semblance of the reverence that would make any sense. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I, I'd love to, I, I, again, this top five horror movie for me. So I will gladly watch this again, but I get what you mean where it's, it is quite, it leaves you uncomfortable. Um, even though we kind of get a happy ending and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, Everything unnerving right there's something yeah. to be said for movies that are you know and again it's like um because horror the genre itself and monsters and all these it's, it's evolved it's evolved so much over time right so you have all the classic monsters that are really frightening especially when you think about the era because you're talking about like you know black and white life is all buttoned up in their homes all safe and next thing you know monsters right mm -hmm. um and then you start to evolve through uh the era of Hitchcock who starts to play more like intellectual psychological games with you, right. starts to play mm -hmm. with like, you know, what if scenarios, if you're put in and what about the, the worst of things? What if you're face to face with the evil and some different things. Mm -hmm. Then we get into this whole exorcist slash evolution of like the slasher movement and special effects and things like that. And I, I didn't even include this earlier one. I, mean, I didn't mention like alien, the first alien movie and things yeah. like that. Cause these were like, these are game changers, right? These films yeah. change everything. Right, the rise of Stan Winston and Rick Baker and Rob Bottin, at least at these um, um, uh, Tom Savini, these amazing special effects makeup artists that you know. Okay, well let's do creatures and okay we can do werewolves. Sure, let's do werewolves. Um, let's do uh, let's do this. You know, so it's it becomes this incredible explosion over the course of definitely fifteen years, but even probably closer yeah. to twenty. Um, and Poltergeist is really kind of a fun, in my opinion, uh, a nice gateway. Mm -hmm. to that right so before you traumatize your children and have them watch certain things maybe baby steps you know <laughs> maybe you need to feel them out and make sure you're not gonna like you know really mess them up i don't know maybe i don't know Vex, who knows Vex though got, it could Vex just got a little messed up it could know. be a random thing like clowns though for you so you know it can go either either way I didn't even totally have that identified as well as i do now like I, it wasn't something that like was like i totally was aware of how bad that is mm-hmm but my wife pointed out that we went to the circus with the kids and it was uh, later and I knew I didn't like clowns mm -hmm. and he started walking up the aisle and I was like, I got to go. <laughs> now he Hold didn't on. come over to us, but I was like, mm. so it felt like um, the symptoms that people have when they have like a panic attack where you start your breath, you're, you're getting short of breath. I mm -hmm. felt sweaty and clammy. I just didn't feel right. And I don't know. How, I'm not, I know it sounds ridiculous and I, I'm totally cool with it being like, I assume this is how people who have like massive fear of heights or a spider or something like that feel. Yeah. It's very similar. I don't even know that I can totally like blame my mom or whatever, but I just feel like there is something there that I have internalized and I've done my best to try to work through it and watching Polterize again for you with you has helped i'm sure i feel better i don't feel clammy i mean i'm bald it's always shiny up here but i mean it's i don't feel clammy. i feel i handled yeah. it okay i feel like we handled it okay so do, so hold on i just in terms of the clowns thing so does like mm. the joker from batman creep you out whenever no isn't that weird joker has never bothered me like from caesar romero on joker is joker he's not a clown i don't know how to explain it because and I don't know how to explain it other than I, cause I, I trust me, I'm asked this all the time by people that know the story. And I'm like, mm -hmm. because I, because I had Joker, like I, I learned to read in a comic book. Like I remember sitting on my grandfather's lap. who was learning to read in comic books. So Joker was always just a villain character in a book. And he was just, I just somehow knew he was just this, this is, he's just this villain. And then whatever the TV and movie iterations are. Now I will admit when I see people in cosplay, mm-hmm. I don't like that. That doesn't do it. I and I don't have like the panic. Oh wait, that's not true. There was someone that was Pennywise mm -hmm. at like a kid event. It was like a kids event, like a like a like a fall festival where you would take like little kids. Mm 
Yeah. And these people, I assume, because some people go really crazy for Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. They came to this thing and this dude was tricked out as a Pennywise. And I was like, nope. I would, my, my wife, I had her hand. I was like, mm, that was too much. <laughs> Pennywise too much. So I think Joker's fine. I don't think I would do well if I was face to face with someone cosplayed out or whatever. But like in movies, stuff, it doesn't bother me. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think cosplaying would go. I don't. I don't. I don't want to go to a Comic Con and have a bunch of people in like really impressive Heath Ledger Joker makeup wanting to pose for a photo with Pops. That's. I'm going to be pretty stressed out. Okay. And Pennywise I, would be no. Pennywise. I'm going to make no. sure now that I wear my Joker cosplay whenever I meet you. So. <laughs> We're gonna have a meetup. <laughs> Vex is gonna come to floor. We're gonna have a meetup, and she's gonna she can cosplay. And I'm like, I want to walk in. And go, that, that's Vex. I gotta go. <laughs> that was the. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not doing that. Don't do All that. Right. It's not fun. So no. Um, yeah. It was. Um, I'm glad that we picked this movie. I really am because it really, it really. I love the dive deep, spend some time, spin your wheels, um, things that are 40 years old, which makes me feel really old. I can talk about being a teenager, seeing these movies in VHS, like wearing them out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's true. It's, it's a fun movie. This uh, honestly, what aged beautifully. I think it's one of those kind of, especially for, like you said, the development of the, the horror genre, it's a yeah. must see film because it does, it really does uh, kind of lay the groundwork for kind of these newer, like uh, these newer genres of, of horror that we got throughout like the nineties and even early two thousands. Right. Like it, it, I love this movie. I can't, I can't say anything bad about this movie. I, I love Cause it. Cause it's, it's the gateway drug from the scarier stuff like Amityville yeah. or Omen and things like actually extra possession mm -hmm. type ghosts and, and spiritual type stuff. Mm -hmm. with like darker horror where you get obviously we have the boom that started with like the ring and all that mm -hmm. stuff that starts after that so it's mm -hmm. the gateway kind of between all that right you don't want to yeah. throw your kid down and make them watch i mean you, you you start messing your kid up you start doing stuff like that folks oh yeah uh, the older guy starts to be like questioning things and i love the fact that in the movie there is at least questioning of life after death what happens to me if i die am i like carrying and clear off if i go if i die i could go stay you, all of that at least is conversation I think that's what's healthy for entertainment and cinema to do some of that yeah. and not be lectury and preachy. Like I hate movies where they think they're religious and they'll start lecturing me about like, well, this proves there's no God. Obviously there's no, you know, I, I don't get, you know, I hate movies where they like, they think they're religious and they start talking in these weird absolutes in this movie. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like none of us even believe half of what you're talking about. Like it doesn't gotcha. fit. Spielberg did a really good job of just throwing out these like generic, conversational stuff which felt very natural for the family of characters that he created mm -hmm. so that's how i felt well it's it's just because not nobody ever has the answer to everything even when you're an expert right so it's 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 nice to see that you know this film is just like yeah we had experts but even the experts didn't know what was going mm -hmm. on right versus mm -hmm. like you said yeah it's if you have say a, a an exorcist in a film it's like he knows everything he's just he he will he will say yes or no. He will make sure he will tell you you're wrong about everything else unless it fits into whatever code his character is designed to follow. So, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is really good. And, and I, like you said earlier, too, you felt like that journey works because the scientist lady and then later the medium, mm -hmm. they both have this. Well, I'm in over my head. I don't exactly know what to do. So it does always lend itself to not getting too arrogant with itself it's like well this happened you know without it being uh let's spoon feed it and let's have some sort of weird yeah. no no we don't want to do that so again i haven't watched this newer film so maybe that's part of what it, i don't i don't know so i don't want to judge that film i, I want you know i think i, I need to watch, to watch it in full because like yeah, I, I literally i went back to back i was like oh okay poltergeist you know 1982 mm -hmm. is great let me, let me just watch the new one even though everyone tells me not to and again, I only got 20 minutes in and I'm fresh off the original. My 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 perce perception is definitely skewed. So I think I'll go revisit it because I do like Sam Rockwell quite a bit mm -hmm. as a as an actor. Um, so I'll, I'll watch basically anything with him in it just for for that fact. But I didn't, yeah. I've never even I, I, I know I watched the two sequels to this film. Mm -hmm. Um I don't remember anything of them. So I, and I have no desire really to go back. 
Um, I don't think I've seen any of the sequels to Poltergeist. Yeah, there's a two and a three because they they, yeah. they basically they did basically rush these things right out to make money because it it did so well, of course. So um, there were two sequels. I know one of them was in '88 because I was I think that's the third third one was in '88 because that's when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was working a theater when that one came out. Gotcha. Okay. But I've never I've never rewatched any of those. I have no desire. I just sometimes you feel like you know the, the, like the cliche of well, well, there's only you know one Matrix film. Just live in a bubble. It's okay. Life yeah. life can just be better if you don't obsess over all the other stuff that just kind of muddies the water. Life's yeah. better if there's just this one Poltergeist film. That's how I feel. I mean, you know. That's okay. how I am with the Alien franchise. There's only two Alien films. Oh, okay. okay. You <laughs> there's know, Alien 1 and that. Aliens. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. I actually don't... Oh, boy, I'm going to hot, hot take. I don't hate Alien 3 as much as most people do. But I think it's because when it came out, the camera shots with like the dog alien when it's running through the tunnels, it's taking you upside down and stuff. And the fact that they tried something completely different with all of the eclectic different prisoners and things like that, it, it felt like I was still in the right alien universe and it was something else that could be told. I hate the beginning of the movie, how they contrive it being there in the ship and so-and-so's dead, Newt's dead. And I, I hate all of that. But as far as the experience of it all, I don't hate it. And if I were to put it on, it's sort of like that mediocre experience for me. It's like, it, it, it's like a two and a half star movie for me. It's like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's like, gotcha. I don't hate it. When you start getting into all of the rest of it, because mm -hmm. even AVP, the first AVP, yeah, it's unwatchable for me now because of the PTSD of the Me Too woke era, because it's the strong female tropes and things without it being that way, because that's not what was intended then when it was made. It was just meant to be a strong woman lead character. Gotcha. But it comes across to me, it just comes across as like so much plot armor and Mary. It was just like, oh, God, I can't stand this movie now. I just did not. It did not do well. I I didn't do videos on any of my rewatches, any of that stuff, because I'm with you. There's two movies. Yeah. There's a third one that can be on. There's other stuff out there. Whatever. <laughs> I don't I think I'm I'm kind of in agreement with you for three. I think the reason I say that there's only two alien films mm. is because those first two are the only ones that felt true and authentic to the universe that they were trying to build and the monster mm. they were trying to build with alien. Okay. I feel like it was diluted in um all the all the sequels that came out. I you know what? I would have liked Prometheus if it didn't tie into the alien uh, mm. universe in all honesty. I think the tie-in is what ruined that movie for me. And then Covenant was just, that was just Covenant stupid. was terrible. Covenant yeah. was retarded. Um, I agree with Prometheus and I almost wish it was not a prequel. I almost wish it was just some other place they found that happened to have alien stuff on it. Like yeah, it would have just been too. fine if it was just, it's in the alien universe, yeah. but it didn't high in like a linear way it's, it's not like a you know prehistoric version of our i mean yeah. that, that's you know if they had just said oh this is this movie that's in this alien we call it prometheus you know whatever mm -hmm. okay that would have worked so we, we all i think we all would have been a lot more forgiving of that film mm -hmm. um alien covenant and things like that it just becomes it just becomes a mess so yeah i think um, I, I like some of the the themes that i think uh alien like prometheus and alien cover covenant tries to explore especially with with uh michael fassbender's character but sure. it it just all becomes so silly and then things happen for the sake of driving the plot forward and it doesn't make sense for any of these characters like for the life of me i'm just i remember seeing covenant i went to the theater to see covenant because mm. i like i like aliens so much mm. and i remember sitting letdown. there i'm just like that's a I date now you can't get back mm. right mm. Yeah. and i remember thinking i'm just like why the ever loving hell would you send married couples together into space on a human colonization mission as a like you, like astronauts go through really rigorous emotional and physical um like training in order to go for years at a time in space so why is there why is there a fat dude up here why why would yeah. you put someone through the emotional turmoil of having a spouse there that would completely throw any logic out the window, right? As like because that, that is just human nature that you go immediately for the people that you care for and that you love. So 
just from the get-go, the world that they were setting up for this didn't make any sense for me. And even just like how some of the characters react too. It was just, but it was beautifully shot. I'll give it that. I thought it was wonderfully shot. This so. is our, uh, this is our, this is our clip that we will um, uh, pull out of here for a second clip of us discussing okay. the alien franchise because mm -hmm. we transitioned so smoothly because uh, <laughs> do you, since, well, since we're on it. So is there a preference that you have before I give you my take on alien yeah. versus aliens too? A you know, alien versus aliens. Oh, which one do I prefer over the two? I don't, yeah. How do you, how, what's your, cause that's, that's you people, people try to give you that binary option, right? Yeah. A or B. Where do you, there, how do you, someone has asked me this question before and I told them before you can't compare the two movies. Oh, that's my girl right there. <laughs> this is why we should have a regular Vex. That is the, Perfect answer. Why on earth are we trying to compare a dramatic sci-fi horror film yeah. with an action-packed sci-fi action film? They are not in the same no. category. They I, are both perfect in their own ways. Exactly. They are, they are in the same universes. They are they they tie together perfectly. They there you do you do not have to be forced into the A or B category with those that movie. It's totally an because they're not the same. They're, they're not, not the all. same. Um, no. Sorry, go ahead. Terminator go ahead. versus Terminator 2, at least you have a harder time dodging that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's harder to it's harder to dodge that A or B because they're pretty much the same. It's it and it's just to me, it's more like a techno technological thing. Like we wouldn't have T2 if we didn't have 84, but 84 obviously can't be compared. I mean, T2 is so incredibly superior with all the effects and the action. Yeah. I mean, just right. But with with Alien and Aliens, I mean, they're not even the same. Sub, they're like, like they're like sub genre. It's, ah, yeah, perfect. Well, it's just the the way I've always seen it is is Alien is meant to be eerie, creepy horror, right? It's meant to just kind of sneak up on you, right? And that's I always think immediately to the one long shot that we get for the first time seeing the alien just walk down the hallway, mm -hmm. right? That is the that's the horror that Alien tries to get across. Whereas in Aliens the horror element is basically gone. This is now just a sci-fi action film with mm -hmm. a very heavy emphasis. Creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a very hev heavy emphasis on trying to develop um, like the female action hero. Because again, mm -hmm. the, the Aliens takes place in also this peak of action hero in, in film, right? So it's, it's harnessing a lot of what's popular at the time, but it works in the sci-fi elements really nicely, but the horror is completely gone. Right. Um, right. I think even in like the few scenes where they try to be hoary, like for instance, when they're in um, like the sewer pipeline and newts mm -hmm. in the water and then you see the alien just pop out of the water behind her. It tries to be creepy, but it's just the entire intent of the film is meant to be a, a, a kind of like a protect and execute kind of um, storyline to it. As yeah. Opposed see to and, yeah. and I think you really hit the nail on the head, too, because I think it's also with the protagonist, right? So Sigourney Weaver in Alien is the same female lead as we see with, like, Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween. She's just the yeah. female survivor. Mm -hmm. However, Sigourney Weaver in Aliens is the uh, Sarah Connor strong kick butt female in an action mm -hmm. film. Like, they're completely yeah. different. Everything has got a nice little line. You do. Mm -hmm. We should never. We should never concede to the binary. I. I yes. will stand on that. I'm so glad. <laughs> Hit me in the feels, Vex. Hit me in the feels. Well, let me get a cloud photo and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think they're both like I would rank them as uh, equally amazing films. But again, I can't compare them because they're two different films. So yeah, I, could, I, just don't know. I could turn I don't... on either one. If I'm in a mood mm -hmm. for something more creepy, I'll watch Aliens. But if I want to see Sigourney Weaver just shoot a bunch of aliens, then I'll watch Aliens, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Vex, this has been a blast. It's been a blast. We um we have a great time. Hopefully, you guys are having a great October. You're enjoying maybe some Halloween or some horror films, or you're just enjoying something creepy and unnerving like Poltergeist, like we did. We loved your comments. We love hanging out with Vex. It's been absolutely awesome. And hopefully, you enjoyed our little uh, alien sidebar that we went down a nice avenue on because I know I did. So I did too. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you uh, check out the description for everything to connect to this lady. And boy, if you talk about just fun commentary on things that she covers, it's a blast. You're just going to have some fun and some laughs. So enjoy that. Um, and uh, yeah, listen, thanks for hanging out with us. 
Till next time, be blessed, talk hard. I am Pops.